So here I'm going to tell you about how to analyse the gene ontology of a list of differentially expressed genes using Top Gene Suite. So Top Gene is run by the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Centre and I like it. I like this tool because it's quite intuitive, it's easy to use, the output data is straightforward to understand. So the tool that we're going to use is Top Fun, so there's a link at the top. Um, and you can see the first thing you need to do is to enter your list of differentially expressed genes. So I have my genes in a spreadsheet in Excel and these are the ensemble IDs. So you could input all your differentially expressed genes, the upregulated and the downregulated ones. But I find that the data from gene ontology is much easier to interpret if I split the list up into upregulated genes separate from downregulated. Now with an Excel that's easy enough to do. So this column here is my change in gene expression, log to full change, and I've set up a filter on this file and I can go to number filters greater than and because it's a log scale anything that's greater than zero means it's upregulated. So I type in zero, click OK and now all the lines show genes that have a log to full change greater than zero so they've been upregulated. So I can copy the ensemble IDs and paste them into a new worksheet and that's what we have here. And then I can copy that column and pop it into the top gene web tool. Now these are ensemble gene IDs so I need to change the entry type at the top don't worry about the fact it says training gene set here. That's not relevant for the, the use that we are using today. So we just click submit. Once you've uploaded your list of genes, you get a page that looks like this. And what this is saying is out of the, in this case, 1247 genes that were uploaded, it recognizes 1224 of them. It knows what they are, what their names are, what their gene IDs are. There are always some where it doesn't recognise what they are, so it doesn't take them any further in this gene ontology analysis. You also have the opportunity to alter some of the settings for the statistical calculations. And once you're happy with all of that, you can click Start. This is what the results page looks like. Um, and so we can see that it has analysed each of those genes and looked at the associated GO terms. And so any GO terms that are statistically enriched in your list of genes are given out here in tables. And it's divided them into the molecular function GO terms, the biological process terms, and the cellular component terms. And so we can click on this link here and that shows all of the statistically enriched GO terms in this list. So here we have the Go ID and the name of that Go term. And then we have the p-value and different ways of calculating the false discovery rate and corrections for multiple testing. The numbers here, so genes and annotation, these are the number of genes in the whole database that have this Go term. So there's up to 705 genes that would match here. And in our input list, there were 81 genes that included that Go term. This table is ranked by uh, Bonferroni, uh, with the most significant being at the top and de decreasing as you go down. So we can see here, we're looking at molecular function. And so the sorts of terms we have here tell you about the types of function of a protein. So we've got channel activity, cyclase activity, um, heparin binding, protein kinase activity. So these can be useful categories, but they don't really tell you much about what that protein is doing within the cell. And so for that, we can go down to the biological process category. Again, I'll expand those. And now we can see actually a lot of those proteins are involved in something to do with neurogenesis, generation of neurons, neuron differentiation, central nervous system development. 
Uh, and so quite a lot of these go terms here are related to that general topic. So we get a better idea of what's happening inside the cell. These cells look like they're becoming a bit more neuronal. We can then go down and look at the cellular component. So this is telling us where these proteins are found within the cell. And again, that's consistent in this case with more neuronal cells. We've got go terms to do with synapse and neuron projection. Um, and synaptic membrane. So you can see these different categories of go terms are telling us different sorts of information. And you may well find that one type of category is more useful for the question that you are asking compared to others. We can get some graphical information from this. If we click on display chart, we essentially see a graph of all those go terms uh, plotted out. So here we have that was that top go term neurogenesis and if you hover over one of the bars on the chart you get more information so the red bars are the numbers of genes in the whole annotation so here 1867 and the blue bars are the numbers of genes in that category from your differentially expressed list and the key thing to note here are the different scales so total terms in the category is a much larger much wider scale than the genes in your uh, set that you've uploaded. So although the blue and the red look similar sizes, they're actually plotted on different scales. The other thing that we have on here is the, those uh, false discovery rates are plotted. And if we scroll down a wee bit further, here we go, they, they start to increase. So here we have one of those, this is the Bonferroni. You can see if we hover, it tells us Bonferroni. And that Bonferroni uh, score is increasing as we go down. And once it cuts, crosses this cutoff, this red one, then that is now no longer significant if, it, if you're taking the Bonferroni scores into consideration. And as we go further down, we can see the other statistical tests starting to increase. We've got the BNY, FDR, and then further down, we have the green one, which is the BNH FDR. So it gives you essentially a visual representation of what we've seen on that previous page. So I'm going to flick back there. And Top Gene also gives us lots of other categories which is analysed. So if we scroll down, um, we have whether your genes are seem to be related to known human uh, phenotypes in mouse or human, whether they're enriched for particular sorts of protein folds. Um, and one which I find quite useful is pathways. So if we expand on this. So there are a few different um, systems that have categorized proteins into different pathways. There's KEG, there's Reactome, Biocarta. And again, what this algorithm has done is it said, okay, are there particular pathways that appear to be enriched in your list of differentially expressed genes? And so we've got two for axon guidance at the top, the KEG one and the reactome axon guidance. And you can see the reactome pathway includes many more genes for axon guidance than the KEG one does. And if you click on uh, any of these gene numbers, it takes you to a list of all those genes that were in that category. So here was your initial ensemble ID, and then we have the name of the gene and the symbol and the entree gene ID. So you can easily get a list of any genes in any of these categories that you can uh, download. And I just wanted to add a few caveats about looking at this sort of GO ontology analysis. So when we do uh, this sort of omics approach, we are taking an unbiased approach. We want to find out everything we can. We're not looking specifically uh, at a particular gene or a particular pathway. So we're taking an unbiased approach. However, when we start to look at this sort of output from Go analysis, it can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming. And at this point, your own biases can come in. So you could look at this list of pathways and think, oh, well, I'm not sure about, I don't know much about axons and I don't know much about extracellular matrix. Oh, RAS, I know something about RAS. Oh, let's go, let's focus on the RAS signaling pathway uh, and that'll be the answer to my questions. So you've really got to be careful that your own bias 
from your background or your assumptions is influencing what you do next with this goal ontology data. Now you probably will have to make some decisions about what to follow up but you need to be very clear and open about how you're making those decisions and if you choose to follow up on the RAS pathway have you got a good rationale for doing that? Is there biology behind that? Does it fit with other information you have? So be very clear about the choices that you're making. The other thing to be aware of, particularly when you're looking at this sort of pathway data, um, is many pathways involve post-translational modification. So MAP kinase signaling, RAS signaling, um, they all involve phosphorylation, you know, for MAP kinase you have a growth factor binds to a receptor on the cell membrane, uh, we then have phosphorylation of the receptor, phosphor um, activation of RAS and RAF, and we have phosphorylation of the MAP kinase cascade. Um, and so we're simply changing the expression level of a protein within that signalling pathway doesn't necessarily mean that there's more signalling through that pathway. This analysis, this uh, whether you're looking at RNA or whether you're looking at protein levels, is not necessarily telling you about phosphorylation. It's not telling you about activity through that pathway. So you've really got to be very careful about how you interpret this data, particularly if you're looking at pathway data. The other thing to remember is, so I suggested that I that when I do this, I find it easier to separate my genes into those that have been upregulated and those that have been downregulated. So if we're looking at biological processes and we can see, oh yes, we have uh, lots of neuron related activities going on, it's reasonable to say, OK, yes, there's probably more neurons in that dish or neuronal related uh, cells in that dish. But particularly if we're thinking about pathways, Pathways have positive regulators and negative regulators, so just because particular proteins seem to be more highly expressed doesn't mean they are activating that pathway. They might be inhibiting or downregulating that pathway, and they might be negative regulators. So again, just be very careful about how you interpret this sort of data. Other things that we have in the in this list, we've got links to PubMed. So this is where individual papers have up have uploaded lists of genes that they've analysed, and the software has related your genes to their lists. And you can see if oh maybe my genes are similar to some to a list of genes other people have found. We also have uh, cytogenetics, transcription factor binding sites. Um, and co-expression atlases. If you want to download this data, you can click on this button here, download all, and that uh, downloads a text file which you can then open in Excel, which will look something like this. So you can see here are all the go terms, what they are, the different p-values, how many of your genes fell into that category, and then here is a list of all the gene names from your list that fall into that uh, Go category. And all the data from that page is there. We've got the molecular function, the biological process, and it's probably easiest if you use the filter functions within Excel to help to organize this data so that you can interact with it usefully. Mm -hmm.